Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another Lightroom editing tutorial. In this video, we are going to create some moody dark look. So we are going from this shot to this one. If you want to follow along, you can find a link to the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. As always, I'm going through the basic stuff first. So here, let's change the profile right away. I want to go from Adobe Color to Adobe Neutral just to have a more flat image, which means I do have more control over the contrast myself. So for the dark moody look I'm aiming for, I try to apply a colder color palette. This means I'm going to drop the white balance temperature, which will make the overall image a lot colder. So let's just drop it very, very slightly. I don't want to overdo it, but of course we can always go back to this point later. Next up, let's set up the base exposure. First, I do like to check the histogram to see if there are any problems, but in this case you can see there are no overexposed parts as well as no unexposed parts, but it's much more on the bright side. So I do want to bring down the exposure as a whole. This will also help to reveal some more details, especially in the highlights. So that's a good starting point right there. I do want to further bring down the shadows to add contrast. You can see we can actually drop them all the way without any underexposure, so that's great. At the same time, again for some more contrast, I'm going to bring up the highlights just to create some interesting light situation going on, especially in the upper part. And although we have increased the highlights all the way up, you can still see on the histogram there is still some room left to brighten up the image. So let's pump up the whites to just do that. And again, just adding contrast this way. Perfect. And at this point, I think I could just add some overall contrast. And I might even raise the blacks a little bit. This will reduce the contrast again, but it also helps to create some kind of soft look, which works quite well on those foggy scenes like this. Okay, now we have the tones set up. From this point on, I can add a little bit of texture just to give this image some sharpness. And for those close up mountain images with a lot of fog, I always like to raise the clarity quite a lot because it brings out so much more details. Perfect. And finally, we could play around with the dehaze slider. I think it might look interesting to bring down the dehaze. This will make the whole shot a little brighter, but also add some kind of soft look to everything. So let's just bring it down a notch. All right, that looks super cool already. One last thing I'd like to do here in this tab is to bring down the vibrance, since I want to have a very dark, grim and desaturated look. So let's drop it quite a bit. All right, now it looks almost like a black and white shot. I'm going to introduce some blue tones later, but for now, let's work on the masking part. And with the masking, as usual, we're going to change this image quite dramatically. First off, let's work on the lower part. Here I can just use a linear gradient and just target the very bottom part of those mountains. I do want to make this area a lot darker, so let's just bring down the exposure. That should be enough. At the same time, I do want to raise the clarity, introducing some more details in the areas which are not covered by the fog down there. Perfect. Then I also do want to add some kind of dark spot in the upper left corner. Again, I can simply use a linear gradient just try to create some dark clouds up here. Again, I'm just bringing down the exposure. I want to make it very, very dark here. And let's see, I think I want to raise the clarity as well. Just add some details to those clouds in this area. Perfect. We could adjust it a little more, maybe rotate it some more and stretch it a bit. And then next up, Let's add a radial gradient and I want to create some kind of special light effect with this one. So I'm going to make it rather thin and now let's rotate it so it follows along the bright part coming down from the top right. This 
looks about right. So I'm going to push the exposure very, very slightly. I'm also going to push the contrast, which will make the mountain peak just pop out a little more. And now I'm also going to introduce some blacks, which adds a subtle glow effect. That's a bit too much, but I think that's good. All right. Then I'm thinking about adding a vignetting effect. Therefore, let's create another radial gradient. This time, however, I'm making it super, super big. Again, I'm rotating it to fit the light. And of course, we need to invert this one. So let's just click that box right here. And I want to further adjust the size here a little bit. All right, that should be good. With this one, let's again just drop the exposure. And at this point, you can see some underexposure kicking in. But when I'm hovering over the clipping part on the histogram, you can see it's in the bottom right corner and this area is not that important to the image. So I think it's okay to have some underexposure in this place. But let's continue adding some more darkness. For the next step, I'm using a linear gradient for the bottom left corner, just like that. And again, just bring down the exposure, just a little bit like that. And finally, I do want to add one more linear gradient for the very top part, covering most of the fog. And here I'm raising the clarity to add more details. All right, that looks great. I think it's time for a before and after comparison. The contrast is much, much stronger. The overall shot looks much darker, but we still have some great highlights coming in from the top part. So at this point, let's start working on the colors a bit. There's actually not that much going on. I am going to skip the HSL panel. I'm heading straight into the split toning and I just want to target the shadows and the midtones. For both of them, I want to have a cold blue color tone so let's start with the shadows and adjust the hue. I think that's a nice blue color tone right there. Let's bring up the saturation, but I'm only raising it very, very slightly because it's easily overdone. Just want to have a very subtle blue color cast in the shadows. That looks good for now. Let's head over to the midtones and do the same thing with a blue color tone and a very, very low amount of saturation. Perfect. Then we can do a little bit more color grading in the calibration tab. Yeah, I just played around with all those sliders until I found something that looks good. In this case, I'm going to push the red primary hue, which will slightly shift the colors a little more towards the blue tones, just like that. And I'm going to drop the blue primary hue right about here looks good. So that's the image after the color grading. You can see we have a very subtle blue color cast while most of it still looks like a black and white shot, which makes it just more dramatic. So the only thing that's left for now is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm going to drop the radius, increase the details, add some masking, which is super important for this image since we only want the mountains to be sharpened. So make sure to hold on the alt click and adjust this slider right here. I think that looks pretty good. And now we can push the amount of sharpening some more. All right, that looks great. So here we have the finished image and all it did take was some Lightroom editing. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask me in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.